Okay, ready to go. I will call this meeting to order at 12.02 p.m., special meeting of the Montpelier City Council. I'll start by asking uh, members of the council who are appearing remotely to uh, to identify yourself. Gary Brown, District 3. Adrian Gale, District 1. District 1. Okay. And it wasn't uh, the Councillor Alfano was indicating he, he's on the road, may not be able to be here. And we're not seeing Councillor Cohn yet, but uh, we I think we can start. Um, I'll call the meeting to order if there are uh, uh, meeting logistics, just very quickly, anyone joining remotely, please change your name to be your first and last name. Uh, anyone who wishes to address the council must be recognized by the chair. We ask everyone to keep your comments to three minutes. And I think that's, that's good for now. Um, you have, uh, have you all recognized? reviewed the agenda and is there any request to change the agenda hearing none we will proceed with the agenda as uh, as published um is there a motion to approve the consent agenda move we approve the consent agenda and is there a second second any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Next up, we're to the uh, to the big topic of uh, today's meeting: discussion of the uh, responsible employer ordinance. Who's going to kick this off? Is it Kelly or Kurt? Kurt, take this one. Okay. Hi, I'm Kurt Monica, Public Works Director. Um, so the uh, intent today is just to um, just to provide council an overview of the ordinance. There's some new members since this was passed. I'm not asking for any formal action other than um, to decide uh, whether or not you want to evaluate this further at a, pu a future public meeting. Um, so I was just thinking I'll be very quick, uh, break this into uh, three uh, components. I'll provide a general overview of how wage rates work and when they apply, um, depending on the funding. Um, some of the potential impacts from our local uh, responsible employer ordinance. Um, and then a, a few suggestions on modifications to the ordinance um, uh, that we've um, noted as we've gone through projects. Uh, so quick. Uh, Quick overview of how rates work. So the, the city's ordinance uses state prevailing wage rates. Um, Kurt, I'm sorry, I need to interrupt you. Yeah. I, I just realized I did not uh, call out uh, general business and appearances, and I just want to see if any member of the public wishes to address the council on any topic that's not on today's agenda. I didn't see anyone that looked like they would uh, be here for that, but... Uh, want to make sure we have that. Okay, seeing none, you can proceed. Thank you. Sure. Um, so the, the city's ordinance uses state prevailing wage rates. Um, most of the federal funded projects that the, the city has are um, administered using Davis-Bacon wage rates. And those uh, generally are EPA projects administered through the state revolving loan funds. Um, and these wage rates are, um, are sort of based on the prevailing wages within regions in, in both cases. And uh, and then there's a, a fringe benefit, which is your vacation or insurance, things like that, other benefits that are added into the total compensation um, to the uh, employee. Um, so there are also different types of um, rates 
based on the type of work that's being done. So um, a flagger has to get paid one rate where a laborer is another, a crane operator is a much higher rate. Um, so every labor classification, every different type of, um, of work that an employee would be doing has a, an individual rate associated with it um, that needs to be paid uh, for these projects. Um, so the city ordinance applies to um, generally locally funded projects, but there are some federal programs which do not have um, wage rates identified through them. So these would also apply to those projects. And those are the ARPA funding. Um, they don't have Davis-Bacon rates, so that would fall to the state rates through our ordinance, uh, USDA and FEMA. Um, the most recent project that we've done that has Davis-Bacon rates was the State Street Sewer Project, which was done last year. Uh, so that was um, through the State Revolving Loan Fund, which triggered um, the Davis-Bacon wage rates. So two sets of rates. We use both of them depending on the type of projects. Um, some, you know, they're not all higher in one over the other. I think the state rates tend to be a little bit higher than uh, Davis-Bacon on average, but it can shift and it's reevaluated every year. There's a new sheet of rates published. Um, so that's kind of the overview. And then um, next, I just wanted to note a few of the impacts. So the reason initially why um, we wanted to talk to council about this is that we were told for the school street project that we just bid that we were looking at a 30% um, cost increase on the bid. That turned out not to be accurate. Um, when we uh, asked the contractor uh, for more detail, they came back and said it's around a 20 to 23% increase on the labor cost, um, not the whole project. So we pushed a little further and asked them what the actual dollar amount was. Um, and they said, probably anticipating change order, about $35,000 or, or five and a quarter percent is what that comes out to. Um, you know, looking at differences in material costs, uh, on the council agenda tonight, there's a material purchase for Bingham Street. It's about 500 feet of pipe. That's $16,000. Then for School Street, which is 350 feet of pipe, it's $560,000. So, you know, I think there is a, a pretty large component of these projects that are associated to uh, labor costs. So I think my best estimate is, is it's around a 10% um, increase from uh, on the project cost through the ordinance. Um, one of the other impacts that I'm concerned about is that some of the small contractors may not bid on these projects that require wage rates just because they don't have the overhead capacity to implement it. Um, so there's a potential that we are shrinking um, our pool of contractors bidding. So School Street, we only had one bid. Part of that is um, is certainly due to the the number of projects that are out and how much funding is available right now, post-flood uh, and ARPA. Um, there's just a lot of work out there, so it's also difficult to, to get uh, bidders. Um, we have some challenging um, budgeting to do on the upcoming capital plan. We talked about that uh, today. We're working on a citywide equipment plan. We've got a lot of deferred equipment um, the pavement condition is is pretty low because we have not been able to fully fund uh, pavement projects. And um, we did reduce one DPW union position this year uh, due to the budget, which um, prevents us from being able to fully support the capital plan. So we have a, a difficult um, capital plan to put together um, this October. And we have a few uh, pretty major projects uh, that this ordinance will apply to. Um, it's about $23 million between the um, the water resource recovery facility project, the biosolids dryer, and East State Street. That's a USDA-funded project, which does not have um, wage rates associated with it, so this ordinance would apply to those projects. And, um, and looking at sort of the state wage rates, I think um, building projects have probably a more, a bigger financial impact than, um, than pipeline projects like School Street. Um, is it so, that because the uh, material is a bigger percentage of uh, pipeline projects? Uh, well, it's more that the the rates associated with um, uh, specialty contractors, electricians, and um, farm workers those are much higher rates than say laborers or pipe installers. Okay, gotcha. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's why. Um, so that's kind of the just potential impact summary. And then finally, just a few issues um, that we've noted with the ordinance that um, we think could be improved. Um, one is it's 
the way the ordinance is written is that if it's a project over two hundred thousand um, dollars, that the um, rates would apply. Uh, it's really difficult, especially now in their current climate, to know what the project cost is going to be until we bid it. Um, so there's kind of two ways we could approach that. One is we could base it off the engineer's estimate prior to bidding, um, or we can put in language. And this is kind of what we've been doing, um, but it is has the risk of, um, of causing some confusion is basically put in the contract that if you bid over 200,000, you have, you comply with the state wage rates. If you don't, then you don't have to. Um, and that's kind of how we've been doing it. But I guess my suggestion would be to, to base it on the engineer's estimate. Um, the other thing is there, there's not, um, a provision within the ordinance to allow staff to utilize the Davis-Bacon rates, the state-funded rates, uh, when they're required in order to uh, be eligible for the funding. So we have um, we're gone under the assumption that that it was not the intent of council to uh, prevent us from being able to get federal funds. So we have been putting in Davis-Bacon rates when the con when the funding applies or requires it, but it's not in the ordinance, so that should be added. Um, Another thing to con consider is to use, adopt the Davis-Bacon rates as opposed to the state rates, and then everything would be consistent. We would always be using the same set of rates rather than going back and forth between the two. Um, and the way the ordinance is currently structured, there's no, um, it's really self-certification by the contractor that they are saying they're gonna comply with it, but we don't have a way to review and confirm that they're actually implementing um, uh, the required pay rates. So um, again, with the Davis-Bacon, there's a, a mechanism for certified payroll where we actually get what the contract, what the employees are being paid on a certified form signed by uh, the contractor. Um, and then, um, yeah, the, the other thing, the, the way it's set up is to have a daily sign-in sheet, you know, I think if we, which is kind of cumbersome um, for the contractors to manage if we just move that to the certified payroll, it would be uh, more streamlined and more effective, in my opinion. And that is, um, that's it. Montpelier adopted the ordinance in 2019. Burlington adopted um, a similar ordinance in 2022. Um, but as far as I know, the state of Vermont and those two municipalities are the only places that use the Vermont state prevailing wage rates. Thanks, Kurt. I have a couple of questions. I suspect others may have, have some too. Um, first off, there is no suggestion that we're not that this is going to push us to not be able to do the whole school street project this year, right? No, that's that's not the suggestion. Uh, <laughs> no, I, we are planning to move forward with school street, and I'm not proposing um, removing these requirements from that contract. So you're just figuring that you're not saying to do anything with regard to this year's project, but in the in the long run you're looking thinking we need to reevaluate it well um you know one potential um path forward is to is to waive the ordinance on future bid projects for this construction season until we can correct some of the issues i noted within the ordinance that's one potential option um but really up to council mm -hmm. um if we have a cost that we if we have a contract that we estimate is going to be a million dollars and then this, uh, there are some overruns or, or any, any figure and there's some overruns, uh, where does the money come from to, to cover that? Um, well, it really depends on the project and, and, you know, if it's a, a enterprise fund, if it's like a water project, then we'll look within operating and see if we can make adjustments to, to cover the difference and um, we will need to do that on school street to make the numbers work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, we try to build in um, contingency funding when we do the estimates so that there is uh, a buffer there. Um, but it's really a case by case basis, depending on you know, how the project is funded as a whole. And something like the water resource recovery facility or the East state street pot project, those are all bonded. And so, Yep, there is an opportunity to adjust. So those are bonded, but they're, the loan is actually through USDA because the interest rate is so much better. Um, 
USDA does have an allowance for amending the loan amount, mm -hmm. but we would have to go back probably and uh, revote the bond. Uh, okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? Tim, yeah. Because this was all new to me. Didn't realize we even had such an ordinance. So is there a place where the responsible wage index is published? Is, is it something that's accessible? Yeah, it, online, it, states prevailing. If you, if you type in state prevailing wage rates, Vermont, in Vermont, okay. it'll come up. I do have a copy here. As it happened, there's hmm. a new set in effective today because it's July 1st and uh, the city manager sent, sent it to all of us, I think, this morning. But that's... Oh, really? I'm but there's a lot that's come out this morning, but, hmm. but yeah, I, I looked at it and it, it doesn't really, without knowing all the other stuff about con construction costs, it's kind of meaningless to me, but. Yeah. So the, the state rates have a, a 42.5% fringe benefit added onto the rates that are published there. I just looked that up this morning. The Davis-Bacon rates are specific to the um, job classification. And is that a, is the difference be between state and Davis-Bacon levels that the state assumes cost of health insurance and Davis-Bacon doesn't, or can you say something that general? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how they're established, to be honest with you. I'd have to dig a little deeper on that. Okay. Any other council members who are here remotely who would like to be heard? Not seeing any hands raised. So you're not proposed, the only proposal that you're asking for today is that we schedule this for a future council meeting. And I'm not talking about the the next special council meeting we have next week, but a future council meeting to take a, a more of a bigger picture look at this. Yeah, I think the question was, is that something council wants to do to, to hold this at the next regular I mean, ideally at the next one, if we're going to, if there is interest in potentially waiving this for this construction season. Right. Which would be July 17. Correct. Then the, the next regular council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, council members, do we have any interest in, in doing this? I think, uh, uh, Carrie. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested in waiving this so you know I, I have no objections to it ending up on the agenda but i just i'm not one of the people who would be supporting waiving it so just want to be on the record with that okay tim i do feel we need to study it and at least consider it so if it's on the agenda i would be happy okay well any one council member can put an item on the agenda. So let's figure, we'll, we'll put it on the agenda for the 17th. It's a really full agenda, right? Yeah, yeah, it's already a full agenda, yeah. And that's one of the things that we sometimes find in the in the summer. We, uh, we knock meetings off our calendar, and then the ones that we have left, we have a lot to do at those meetings. So... We'll just see. Is there anybody else who wants to talk about this? I'm not seeing any other hands. And so that, that gives you what you need for today. Yes, thank you. Okay. And I don't see any other business. Is everybody happy with uh, with adjourning? Okay, and we will be in adjournment at 1222 p.m. Thanks, everybody.